Good morning, everyone. Welcome into the Saturday Morning Coaches Show. I'm Don Julian. We have a basketball show for you today. Clark Cipolletta is with us to uh, talk about uh, Wildcats basketball. And uh, we also have an assistant coach for the Lady Cats. We have Jeremy DeLorge is with us. And uh, not to be confused with Brandon DeLorge, who works uh, on Clark's staff, uh, we're very fortunate to have those guys. They're a good, a good couple of guys that uh, know their basketball and good uh, assistant coaches. And uh, we'll introduce you to Jeremy if you have not met him. Uh, real quickly on other sports, uh, Wildcat soccer, 0-1 for the season. Lost to Salina yesterday, the opening se uh, regular season opening game for the Wildcats. And that's in the Princeton tournament. They'll play Princeton uh, just uh, starting in a few minutes. They'll start at 9.15 over there, the schedule to start. And uh, as far as this week is concerned, they have uh, Nevada Community at home on Tuesday at 7 and in the Longview tournament uh, Thursday through Saturday. So that's the Wildcats. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Lady Cat soccer, they're 0 1 and 1 for the season. They opened uh, regular season yesterday in the Terrell tournament with a tie with Mesquite Poteet. It was 0 0. And then they played a really good Red Oak team. Uh, Joel Bailey said they were very, very good. And uh, Red Oak won that one 7 to nothing. So uh, a tough uh, match for the Lady Cats there. And again, Wildcats and Lady Cats, both of them, uh, having an injury bug a little bit. Uh, and uh, illnesses, uh, uh, players that just kind of subpar. So I know uh, uh, Alexi Upton told me he had four players uh, that uh, he could not play uh, in, uh, in that tournament. Uh, one of them was on crutches, I saw, but I think it was an ankle injury. Hopefully it won't be too serious. But uh, some tough times right now as the soccer teams get started, but you'd rather have your tough times now than if you're getting ready to start district play next week which they're not, thank goodness, but they've got a lot of tournaments and stuff to get ready for uh, that uh, to happen. And let's see, this week uh, for the uh, Lady Cats, they'll be in the Princeton tournament Thursday through Saturday. Only other note, and it's a big one, uh, next Saturday, mark it on your calendar if you love powerlifting, the Sulphur Springs Powerlifting Meet will be taking place at the multi-purpose building. Uh, Casey Jeter's been uh, hammering on me every time I see him, but I, I enjoy talking to him uh, to talk to somebody so enthusiastic about powerlifting. And he calls this one of the biggest powerlifting meets, maybe outside of the state meet, and, uh, one, and with the most participants. Uh, and this is an opening meet for both teams, so they'll bring a ton of people uh, from all over. Uh, Coach Owens uh, helps put that together and doing a good job with that. So uh, that's everything else. Now we're talking with uh, Clark Cipolletta. Uh, Wildcats uh, beat Princeton last night. High scoring game. Uh, I said during the broadcast I thought it was going to be in the 80s. And uh, well, it was in the 80s, except the Wildcats ended up in the 90s. I think a season high for points, uh, 94 points, Clark. Uh, is that the case? Or? Uh, yeah, season high for sure. And uh, since I've been uh, the head coach of Sulphur Springs, it's the most points we've put up. And I thought oh. our kids, uh, um, I thought offensively we did a really good job of just executing and knocking down open shots when they left us open, really working the ball inside. Um, I thought we did a really good job rebounding offensively and uh, getting second chance points. So um, uh, for the most part, we were fi firing on all cylinders on the offensive end. And it's certainly a good thing because uh, you played a good Princeton team. I was very impressed with them, especially their guards. Uh, that one guard, uh, he was just as quick uh, up and down the court. He presented a lot of challenges. I know you were doing everything you could, putting your best defender on him and stuff like that, trying to slow him down, but uh, he was just incredible. Yeah, number four, I think he had 39 points on us last right. night, and um, that's, a, that's a season high for an individual, and we've played a lot of guys, I mean, going big time, Division One, and um, he pro posed more of a threat than uh, a lot of guys have all season, but they just did a really good job of uh, making it hard on us to stay in front of them and uh, knocking down open shots when we left them open. So it uh, wasn't our best defensive effort for the most part, um, but it got the job done. Yeah, uh, the the tempo of the game, we were very up-tempo mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, just a lot of players that seemed like uh, the first thing they grabbed the ball in transition was in their mind. A lot of guys uh, like uh, Khan and and day day, you know, when they get rebounds, they were firing down the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we knew going into it, they weren't very deep. They only played about five or six guys uh, consistently, and we could roll seven, eight, nine at times. And 
Um, and our bigs are, are very skilled. You have Cameron, who's really a guard slash forward, who can really put the ball on the uh, deck and push tempo, and so can Sedadrian Hall. And even Xavier has the ability to do so. So that just uh, ignites our break even faster. So when those guys are getting out running, it just makes us a, a quicker team, and we were able to take advantage of that. Great uh, first quarter by Sedadrian Hall. Uh, well, let's see, 12 points. <clears throat> he had six baskets, and he just, uh, you know, was. Uh, and, and was a killer on the boards as usual. Right, and he, he's the type of kid where um, you don't have to run stuff to him. Uh, I don't have to run 10 plays to get him those 12 points. He's the type of kid that gets points on his own. So coaches love those type of kids that just kind of go out and find ways to score the basket. And he does, um, and we, we talk about this all the time, but probably the best job in the state of Texas, in my opinion, at offensive rebounding, especially as an undersized uh, forward you would say he, he just has a real nose for the basketball and just finds a way to score it down there and has such good touch around the rim. It's just a, a, a big threat on our offensive end, and it's a nice weapon for us. Second quarter was kind of wild. Uh, it turned into a three-point uh, contest at the NBA or something. <laughs> Uh, you had uh, Willis hit three, you had one from uh, Day Day, and uh, also Deuce Berry comes in and does what he does so well and hit a three. <laughs> yes, and I'm, I'm glad to see us shooting the ball well. Since I've, uh, like I said, since I've been here at Sulphur Springs, we've taken a lot of pride in shooting the basketball. We've kind of struggled earlier this year in <laughs> our three point percentage. We want it up above uh, 35%, and we've kind of been in the 28 uh, the 29% uh, mark most of the year, and that's that's not good because you're not getting a point per possession on your shots. But um, here lately, I think the last five or six games, we've been about 33 to 36%. Um, so it's a, a pleasing factor to see us uh, be able to shoot the ball at a higher uh, rate and, and guys just having the confidence to see that ball go through and hopefully that carries on through the district. What kind of shooting percentage do we have? Do you remember, did you make note of it? Uh, yeah, it's like 32 right now. Um, uh, now oh, last is, night? Yeah, last oh, night. Oh, we, we don't know yet. Um, oh, okay. We'll send in our stats and we'll do that stuff this weekend. Um, but I, I would say it was probably in the 40% hmm. uh, range last night. I thought we shot the ball, um, at least from three-point uh, land, uh, really well. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, deceiving a little bit because uh, even though there were some missed first shots, there were a lot of second shots. We got a lot of offensive mm -hmm. rebounds from several different guys. Uh, I was uh, very pleased to see uh, you got uh, Justin Hare in there. He played two games last night. Yeah, he did. He played as a freshman and then came on to the varsity. He scored six points, and mm -hmm. I think that's his his uh, Wildcat varsity high. I believe. It is, and he's going to be a special kid for us. He has a bright future in uh, Wildcat basketball and just a, a great kid who is just going to keep growing. And um, I thought he did a great job coming in last night. Had uh, two offensive rebounds and had a steal and a, a dunk on the <laughs> other end. So it was really cool to see him have some success, and we knew he would, and, and he'll keep playing up and back down just kind of depending on what we need uh, from him. But a uh, tremendous kid, and I'm, I'm glad he had that success last night. Keiston Willis was not only stroking the threes, uh, he looked really good from three-point land, but had another just all-around good game for him, 21 points for Willis. And I thought this was the, the most settled in he's ever played. I, I thought early on he kind of forced some stuff. Uh, um, you know, when you're a kid trying to get offers and, you know, you, you want to go play college basketball, at times you can try to overdo stuff to show – different people, you know, your abilities, and I'm okay with that with him because uh, we know he's capable of doing a lot of stuff, um, but since he's committed to Incarnate Word, I thought mm -hmm. um, just that relief off of his shoulders is, is gone, and I think he'll play a lot more freely, and uh, um, I, and I thought last night was a good sign of it. Just made plays, um, passed the ball really well in pick and rolls, shot it when he was open, he wasn't overthinking stuff, and then when guys closed out hard, he was able to get to the rim and finish. So he's a, a guy that can score at three levels. He's a uh, guy that can go get to the rim, mid-range, and uh, he can shoot it from anywhere. So um, big time offensive player for us. Well, uh, it, it, sometime a reporter gets a question in their head and they've got it stored there. And when, some, when it gets answered, they freak. I was just going to ask you if signing, you know, kind of calmed him down a little bit. You were talking about playing a, a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. But uh, you answered the question, so uh, you uh, beat me to the punch. But I've got an, I've got an out. Uh, it's time for a break. Let's take our first internal break back with Clark Cipolletta right after this. Back here on the Saturday Morning Coaches Show, we're talking with Clark Cipolletta, Wildcats basketball. Uh, improve their record to 14 and 8. It's not something Clark is real concerned about. 14 and 8. 
Um, and I have a feeling uh, that uh, with uh, district play coming up and everything that that, that record is uh, going to improve quite a bit uh, uh, unless I'm, I'm totally wrong about this Wildcat team, Clark. Um, yes, I hope you're not wrong. Um, I think we have a good chance to go compete for a district uh, championship and um, we've really uh, set up our schedule to get us ready for this moment. And uh, uh, we'll see uh, a bunch of different teams and a bunch of different styles of uh, teams and kids and athleticism so you'll kind of get both mix you'll get teams that slow it down shoot it well you'll get teams that play really fast and want to press and might not shoot it as well and then you'll kind of get a mix of both where you know you have one or two kids that can shoot it you have some athleticism with them uh, and you know they, they might push the tempo and slow it down so um, hopefully on um, this pre-district district schedule has got us uh, ready for that moment uh, once again last night <clears throat> uh, you Everybody that could play uh, that was suited up, I think 10 of, 10 of them, maybe 11. But everybody played, everybody scored, and I know you love that. Yeah, uh, that, that's fun for a team. It just gives a good vibe, and uh, kids, you know, you get that feel-good sense at the end. And um, throughout the uh, fourth quarter, um, I really want to see some of those guys get a, a huge opportunity to, to come into the game. And um, I thought they did a good job. I thought LaModric. Um, handled the ball really well, got to the, the rim and made some plays off of our pick and roll stuff. Um, Deuce, Justin, um, Boo came in. Uh, he's played big all year. Um, Kai is, is starting to really kind of find his role and niche uh, within this team. And um, it's like I said, it's just a cool feeling as a coach when everybody gets to uh, mark in the scorebook. Now, uh, Grayson McClure, he, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, had illness uh, last night when I had to sit. Yeah, he, he's missed a couple of practices this week with the stomach bug, so uh, we just sat him out and um, just trying to get him ready for district, and he'll be fine. Um, he, he practiced uh, Thursday oh, okay. uh, with the team. It just wasn't in full strength or health, um, so we didn't want to chance anything. But, um, yeah, he'll be back and ready to go. Yeah, he was hanging around during warm-ups. He looked like he wanted to find his uniform and get out there. He did, and I, after the game I was messing with him. I, I said, you're, you're a heck of a manager. We might look into something like <laughs> like this in the near future. And he just laughed and said, no way. And uh, Not for him. Uh, no, but you could tell he was itching to get into the game. Yeah. He's such a good kid. And uh, even when he wasn't playing in the game, just talking in the huddle and providing suggestions and making sure our bench um, was celebrating and doing what they were supposed to do is just a huge help. And he wants to be a coach one day, and you can really oh. tell um, he has that coaching yeah. instinct. And I think he's going to be a great one. I told him uh, when he's ready, I'll fire Coach Manning and hire him. So uh, <laughs> just being funny. But uh, um, you, you can just tell that's what type of kid he is. You hope Manning is still around. He, <laughs> I do. Uh, he is uh, probably ready for a head coach job. I'm not trying to get rid of him. No. I, I love having him on your staff. you got a couple of really good guys, but mm -hmm. uh, I know, uh, you know, Brandon DeLorge, uh, he uh, was the head coach at Bland, mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, he has that head coach experience. And, uh, you know, he brings a lot to your staff. He's had a lot this year, and Coach Manning, too. Oh, uh, both coaches that I have are tremendous. Um, and it's kind of been I – mean, it's been a blessing to, to have those guys just uh, – um, just their passion and um, just the way that they see the game really helps me as a coach kind of, um, you know, focus on different stuff. And I don't have to focus on everything within a picture where I can break it down into bits and pieces. And uh, Coach Manning's ready for a head job. And, and I want guys on my staff who want to be head coaches because mm -hmm. that, that means they probably have a more passion and desire um, within themselves um, where if you get somebody who just wants to be an assistant all their life, they're probably not trying to better. I mean, they might, um, but in my opinion, they're not always trying to better themselves to get to that next level and have that fire within them so um, both of those guys are going to be great head coaches one day and um, then they're going to leave me. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens it uh, does, you know sure. and that's just the natural order of things mm -hmm. uh, like you say you'd, you would kind of wonder if a, you know it might be great to have a 20 year assistant coach as if he loves this situation you know why mm -hmm. not but exactly. most you know, most coaches are looking I mean they're, you're a bunch of, of uh, wandering uh, a profession all over For the sure. place uh, talk to the wives, and they'll give you they'll give you the eight or ten places they coached at uh, in, in, over the resume of a coach. Usually, when you talk to them, um, Greenville, the Greenville Lions. Uh, you you don't have a game scheduled Tuesday. That's to get a little bit more gym time and, right. and and get ready for district play. But tell us about Greenville coming up on Friday. Um, they're very athletic. Uh, that they play very hard for their new coach. They got a new coach last year, and he kind of came in and really tried to change the culture. They haven't had the success that they've had in the past in a couple of years. Uh, I would uh, 
revert back to probably us eight years ago, nine, ten years ago, um, where you were just really trying to get guys to buy in and um, uh, just kind of get your numbers up. And I think uh, this coach is doing a really good job of that. And um, it seems like each week, I, each week that I watch them, they just get a lot better. Um, from, from the first week, they really struggled scoring the ball, and now they're shooting it at a higher rate, and they're getting up and down the floor. So um, I, I think they, they have guys on the floor who can really pose mismatches for us, so we just got to make sure that we do a good job of handling their athleticism, keeping them off the offensive glass, and um, they'll try to pressure us. They run a little zone, and they try to trap everywhere, so we just got to do a good job handling that. I remember that coach from last year, very intense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was much in, very into the game and, you know, trying to – prod those players into giving the absolute best effort. He was really active in that game last year. I remember that. Yes, and his kids play so hard for him, and that's hats off to his coaching style and the, the culture he's building over there. Um, even though uh, some games they've been down 15, 20, and they're still running through walls for him. Um, so that's the type of persistence you want uh, as a coach. And um, you know, I think they're going to do big things if they keep doing that. We recognize several of their names from the football team, and those, those guys are very, very athletic. and. Uh, sure. And Greenville always seems to get good athletic players uh, over there and guys that can, can really play. We've seen some good Greenville teams come into the gym before. They have, and they've had size, and they can run around. They've been able to shoot it. They have one of the probably one of the best offensive players in the district. Um, he'll be a senior this year, and uh, he's been on varsity since his freshman year, and he's been first team all district newcomer um, a couple of years back and um, he'll, he can shoot it from anywhere. He's a fun player to watch. He's uh, came to some of our open gyms in the summertime and um, we, we got to do a good job limiting him. But when you have him and you have some athletes to go along with them, um, yeah, it's, it's tough to guard. Uh, best of luck this week, Coach. I know you're battling uh, some some stuff, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so uh, best of luck to you to try to get over that and uh, and lead the Wildcats. And what will be uh, quite a deal uh, coming up on Friday will be Lady Cats at 6:15, and uh, then the Wildcats at uh, 7:30. Uh, both the varsity teams back to back. And that's going to be going on for eight weeks mm -hmm. uh, in the season, uh, either, uh, home five, for five weeks and three weeks on the road before the very end of the season when you split again, uh, when you've got to continue to play and the Lady Cats will be looking for the playoffs, hopefully. Yes, and, and we're, we're excited. We get to all be together as a community, and um, I think uh, we'll, we'll draw in more crowds. and. I and mean, it would give us a chance to kind of see our sub varsities as well. Um, we get to play in the auxiliary gym here in Sulphur Springs. So um, it's just right next door. So I think it's a really good setup for um, both basketball programs and also the community to see um, both sets of uh, uh, the girls' basketball teams and the boys' basketball teams. So we're hoping to have good crowds come out. And uh, we've had good crowds up to this point and um, just uh, continue to do so. Advice, get there early. Early, yes. <laughs> get there early. if you. Mount Pleasant's coming too, and you know that game's going to be zoo that always wall to wall for that one. But for sure. uh, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, Greenville they'll probably travel pretty good for first district game. So, mm -hmm. uh, Jim, a good crowd last night too with Princeton coming in. Yes, I was I was shocked to see how many people were there last night, and um, they just always seem to amaze me uh, just how many people that just keep coming, and uh, we're just so appreciative of that because it's it's nice for the kids to get to to feel. It's almost like you feel the love. Uh, when, when you have that many people, uh, you know, coming to watch you play. And uh, it's just great for our kids and the program. And um, um, just moving forward, we hope it continues. Thanks again for your time. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk Lady Cats basketball right after this break. And back here on the Saturday Morning Coaches Show and introduce somebody to you that you may not have seen before. This is Jeremy DeLorge. Yes, sir. And uh, where's the family from, uh, Jeremy? Uh, we are from Stephenville, Texas. Stephenville. Yeah, me and my wife, we met in college down at Tarleton State and uh, got the notice that Lady Cat basketball, we were looking for an assistant and jumped on it and came out this way. Now, you were the second. We talked about your brother, Brandon. Yes, sir. Uh, he had been hired a little bit earlier, I think maybe during the summertime, because yes. I saw him at Clark's uh, basketball camp. That's where I met him. <laughs> And, uh, and then you came along uh, a little bit closer to the beginning of school, I believe. Yes, sir. It's a, uh, he, he is actually the one that told me about uh, Sulphur Springs needing an assistant coach for the girls. Uh, he wasn't sure if it was something that I, I'd be interested in. I haven't coached girls uh, before, but I, I've loved it. Uh, I, I, I loved him reaching out and letting me know that they needed an assistant. And, uh, but, yeah, he, he came in a little bit earlier in the summer, worked at camp with uh, Coach Sip. And then uh, I jumped on a little bit later, a little bit closer to school starting. 
Now we've just got the two teams. We have uh, just the JV and the varsity team. Yes, sir. Do you and uh, uh, Tyler? Uh, I'm losing his last name. Coach Lindsay? Yes. Yeah, yeah Tyler Lindsay. Yeah, Tyler okay. Lindsay. Uh, you two guys, uh, do you kind of just trade off and as far as the head coaching, or do you do um, that? Or? Let's see, it, it's mainly me uh, with, with the JV now. Uh, it, it, I would say I pretty much have the JV to myself. Um, I'd say he helps uh, definitely with practices and everything, though, when it comes to game time uh, and game prep. Um, it, it's me with the JV and then all three of us with uh, me, Tyler Lindsay, and Brittany Tisdale. We, we all get our heads together uh, for varsity uh, prepping that. But when it comes to game time, uh, not say I, I, I'm the head coach of the JV. All right. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, Royce City game last night. Yeah. In case people had not heard, uh, Royce City did win on their home court, the district opener for both teams, and 69-53. Uh, to 53. And it uh, sounded like we were, you know, kind of behind at halftime. Mm-hmm. looked like we played a good third quarter and yes. got to within range, and then mm-hmm. uh, fourth quarter just kind of collapsed on us. Yes, sir. I say uh, we came out strong in that third quarter. Uh, we we kind of came out slow uh, a little bit in the first half, but uh, they were battling. Uh, Roy City is a really good team. Um, they have a six foot tall freshman that's a lefty, and if she gets downhill, she'll close out at the basket. Mm. Plus, she can she has a very nice shot. Um, she she can shoot from almost anywhere. Uh, and then the coach's daughter, um, book out. She she's just an incredible player that that, mm-hmm. ha, that has handles as well too. So uh, we knew that we were gonna have our uh, hands tough with them. But uh, our our defenders uh, that we put on them, Danielle Gobbolt, uh did great work on, on the defensive side uh, with uh, their their six foot tall freshman um, number forty two. And then uh, we had uh, Tierra Rose uh, start out uh, on their coach's daughter, and they did it good. But uh, Sedavia came out with a fire underneath our belt uh, in the third quarter and, and put up some good points for us. And, and she had uh, I got the stats from uh, Coach Tisdale, and she had 26. Yes. In the ball game, do you keep the book? I think you should yes. tell me. Oh right? yeah, I so see. She had 26 uh, in the game, but she had 15 of those in the third quarter. Wow. Uh, she fouled out early in the fourth, so oh, we my. we didn't get to see everything that she got that she could have done um she very well could have had a 35 point game um yeah. but uh she she unfortunately fell out uh, early in the fourth but uh she she put up some points and went to work in the third quarter and going into the fourth we're only down nine um but when she picked up her fifth early in the fourth uh that's when it kind of started uh, going Having us. observed quite a few Lady Cats games this year, mm-hmm. it is a different team without Sedavia on the court. Yes, uh, that is so true. She is she is the driving force. Uh, she she's so quick. Uh, her handles are absolutely amazing. Um, some of the best I've seen uh, out of any of the girls um, that we've played, as well as on our team. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It is different whenever she's out. Uh, Autumn Tanton had 14. Uh, go ahead and uh, give the rest of the scores. Look like uh, Danielle Godbolt had six. Kate Womack had five and two for Nyla Lindley. So that was the scoring for the Lady yes. Cats last night. I uh, also had a chance to uh, look at uh, uh, some of the uh, various and sundry things. And one thing that jumps out, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes on the road you get this kind of figure total mm-hmm. fouls, Lady Cats 26, Royce mm-hmm. City 18. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I say uh, it, it started out, um, I mean, first half, uh, towards the end, it was, it was kind of even in foul count, but. Uh, starting out that third quarter, we got down uh, to a six zero count uh, pretty quick. So that kind of put us behind the eight ball a little bit. But uh, I mean, our girls fought hard in that third quarter with the foul count, what it, with the way it was, and Stavy going how she was to get within nine points going to the fourth quarter. It was it was really amazing to watch. As I look through these stats, what you're looking for is <clears throat> you know a reason that mm-hmm. you lost the game. First thing you see is overall field goal percentage, forty percent to forty percent. Yes. So we were dead even with them uh, in that uh, category. Mm-hmm. But we to mention the fouls, and here's another big category: turnovers. Yes. And and this is something that plagues this Lady Cat team from time to time. They had twenty one, and Roy City only committed ten turnovers, which is more what uh, your goal probably is. Yes, that is that is so true. Uh, let's say we want to try and keep it. Uh, in single digits as much as possible, uh, but um, when we get 21 turnovers, that can kind of hurt as well. But uh, Roy City going to their turnover uh, with having 10, they they can handle the ball and they take care of it very well. Yeah, uh, that's a that's always a key to the yes. game, and that's uh, something that 
that those high turnover turtles will eventually, you know, you're going to catch up to you. And here's another figure that uh, jumped out at me was the rebounding totals. Yes. Lady Cats had 28 rebounds, but Royce City had 37, so they win the battle on the boards. Yes, they say they 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 have some big posts that know how to put a body on our girls, and they just block them out, and uh, they 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 all hustle as well too. Um, what was also uh, surprising as well is. A lot of the guards, they, they just hustle so much. Um, they, they have a set of rotations between number one, three, and five um, mm -hmm. that they can kind of rotate in, and, and they're just all hustle players. Um, they, they might be under undersized with like Autumn and Nala and even Danielle, but uh, they'll just go after a loose ball very easily, uh, mm -hmm. and, and they'll fight for it. And uh, that is one thing Roy City had last night. They, they definitely uh, had a lot of hustle in them and heart. Uh, some other things that kind of jumped out a little bit, our free throw percentage was only 55%. I know yes. you'd rather see that probably closer to 70 or, yes. or at least in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And three-point percentage was only two out of 11. So, yes. um, But again, this has not been a, you know, a real prolific three-point shooting team this year. We've kind of picked our spots. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the good thing is you've got four or five people that can do it. But, yes. uh but just not just don't hit on a consistent basis. Yeah, that, that's so true. I say uh, we do put up a lot of shots, but uh, I say unfortunately, last night just wasn't our best game. Uh, usually, we, we do make about maybe four or five uh, a, a game, uh, which which is typically nice. Uh, but unfortunately, we just weren't knocking down shots, um, and, and they were. I th uh, if I remember, I think they went six of twenty. They they put up a uh, Roy City. Uh, they put up a lot of shots and. With the amount of shots that they put up, they're going to get more to go in, and right. um, so with them going six twenty, us going to eleven from three, um, that kind of separated a little bit. Uh, but what kind of stood out to me the most, uh, looking back at it, was was the free throws as well. Yeah. Um, I, I believe they went twenty three of thirty five, and we went I think eleven of twenty. Um, so with, with that. Uh, we, we put them to the line a lot. They got to the line, and they, they were able to make down, uh, knock down uh, most of their free throws, which kind of kept the, the score just, just out of reach to where every time that we would make a run, they knocked down a couple free throws and bring it back to like 11, 12, 13, and it would just stay right at that point. And unfortunately, we just couldn't come, uh, overcome it last night. You either studied these stats for your appearance today or they just stick in your head. He just quoted uh, exactly 11 out of 20 and 23 for 35 without any notes. He just pulled them out, and that's exactly what's on this sheet here. So good, yeah, good job. Th thank you. I say, uh, last night, we, uh, us coaches, we, uh, we're, we were definitely playing that game over and over in our head last night. Right. Um, we're, we're ready for Royce City to come in. We're ready for district. I say it was a district opener. Um, tough loss uh, but we're, we're ready to see them again as well as everybody else in, in our district so yeah you, you do look forward to the rematch when they come yes. into uh, our gym and, and the girls play very very well in that yeah. gym yeah we're, we're so looking forward to it as, I, as you said uh, our girls they definitely play well uh, for our home crowd um, haven't seen a game that they have that, that they played bad yet uh, on our home court so uh, that's why we're, we're really looking forward to Roy City coming out and I say uh, it'll be, I believe, one of those games that we share with the guys. So we'd love to see that gym completely packed out for us. Absolutely. More uh, with uh, Coach uh, Jeremy Delors, assistant with the uh, Lady Cats basketball team. Let's uh, take our uh, last internal break here, and we'll be back and wrap it up right after this. And back here on the Saturday Morning Coaches Show, again talking with Jeremy Delors. He's the assistant. Uh, to uh, Lady Cats basketball coach Brittany Tisdale in her first year with the Lady Cats and having a great year at 18 and 4, now 0 and 1 in district play. And uh, coming up, uh, now this is the same schedule that we encountered in, in volleyball. That's uh -huh. the first thing I noticed because they had a very tough schedule where they had to go to Royce City to open and then go to Lindale. And Lindale had yes, a tremendous volleyball program. I don't know if some of those girls also play basketball, but they might. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how much do you know about uh, Lindale? The Lady Cats will have to go there. It'll mm -hmm. be two road games to start district at Lindale Tuesday night. Yes, sir. I say, uh, I say we're looking forward to the game. I say I know we're opening up district on the road back to back, but uh, we're we're going for it and uh, we're ready. We're ready to hit it running. Uh, as far as Lindell, uh, ladies, um, not don't know too much, but uh, looking at their volleyball team, uh, they they are athletic. 
um, and hearing some of the other coaches talk uh, that they've played, uh, they're, they're athletic, they can shoot uh, as well too. I know they ran up against um, a well-coached Mount Pleasant team uh, last night and they oh. ended up losing. Oh wow. Uh, so, okay. so, Lin so us and Lindo will be going into our second district game looking for our first wins. Um, but uh, we're looking forward to it. I know they had a couple girls out against Mount Pleasant, uh, so it's going to be a little bit different look probably against us than what Mount Pleasant had. Um, but but we're ready to get uh, hit that road on, on, on Tuesday and take it to them. Now you just complimented Tina Carrillo out there. I wouldn't be surprised if Tina's uh, hiding back behind that um, camera, <laughs> sitting at home, uh, no telling. I don't know what <laughs> she and David are up to today, but, uh, but she does a great job. And, yes. uh, and uh, so I wouldn't put it past her. I know Rusty Harden, when he was coaching Greenville, and he used to live in town here, mm -hmm. he would watch the Saturday morning coaches show and see what the Wildcats were up to, <laughs> and he was plotting. Uh, we know, we figured you out, Rusty. We, we know all that. <laughs> He's a wily guy, oh, but yeah. uh, so a big, a big game with Lindale. And then, yes. what are your thoughts on this uh, Wildcats and Lady Cats? You kind of mentioned it with Royce City. That's going to be going on, and five times in our gym mm -hmm. over the next eight weeks. Three times on the road, uh, we will have uh, this kind yes. of setup. And uh, you, you uh, I, I know Coach Tisdale liked it. Oh yes, yeah, we, we absolutely love it. Uh, say. Um, uh, like Coach Cipolletta was uh, talking about as well too, it's great for the community, it's great for everybody to come out and be able to see um, whoever they want to. We, we're going to have the freshman boys, both JV teams, uh, girls and guys, and both uh, varsity uh, squads with the Lady Cats and the Wildcats. So uh, it's a great opportunity with us just right there in the auxiliary gym, right next door, um, being able to see uh, all those um, sub-level sub teams um, and just have everybody come out. Um, I, I'm actually looking really forward to it, and we're very glad that we're able to ho host the games in the auxiliary gym to where everybody can just stay at one site instead of going back and forth between uh, the middle school and the high school. So it'll be very, very beneficial and great. Are you enjoying coaching the young ladies? Oh, yes, sir. It's, a, it's great. I, I love these girls. Uh, they're, they're a great group of girls. They, they have a lot of heart and drive uh, and they have passion for the game as well. Um, with the JV squad, they're very young, but you can tell that they have a lot of passion and heart uh, for everything that's going on and buying into the program that uh, Coach Tisdale is bringing in with it being her first year. And uh, let's say the varsity squad, um, the, the, se the group of seniors that we have are so tight knit and they're, they're, they're amazing to work with. Uh, the, the skills that each one of them uh, give to the team as well as give to the underclassmen is par none. Um, let's say with, with Nala only being a sophomore and her being a starter, uh, being around those girls, it's definitely helping her a lot. Uh, she has a lot of uh, skill there. And then with Aaliyah Abram and Kate Womack as well too, coming off the bench as juniors, um, they're, they're amazing role players for us and they're going to have a huge impact for us next year after we lose uh, the, sen the senior group. Yeah, they're getting some valuable minutes. They're put in there in some big, big moments in yes. games that I've seen. So uh, uh, that uh, is very important to yes. get that playing time. Now you work with the JV. Now that's a lot of instruction. You're yes. you're you're teaching these uh, young ladies uh, maybe you know for the first time maybe how to block out and mm -hmm. how to you know how to play defense and uh, yes. you know, find your own shot and all that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. I say uh, that that is one thing that I stress with them um, a lot. I say we. They're still kind of finding their groove and niche and, and getting to playing defense and uh, closing out on someone uh, instead of having them just an open shot, rotating on defense, uh, as well as blocking out. That's a, that's a huge one. Um, so we, we do, uh, with, with the JV girls, with, with what I do with them, is a lot is block out drills and closing out and uh, fighting through screens and going around them, how to read, how to help off and things like that. So, uh, and, and they're they're doing very well in that. Uh, they're, they're picking it up uh, very quickly. And uh, a lot of them do have a lot of natural talents that are there and we're just kind of bringing it to the surface and growing and expanding onto that, uh, getting them in with, uh, because a lot of them are freshmen. Uh, we have nine girls, one's hurt right now. Um, and out of the nine, seven of them are freshmen, uh, two are sophomores. So they have a lot of room uh, to grow and a lot of experience to soak in uh, right. with the coaching staff that we have. 
And it's really amazing as I watch uh, some of the sub-varsity teams, the boys and girls, to see the progress through a season. Yes. You see them early in the season, they look lost. You think, mm -hmm. gosh, is there any help on that team? You know, it's gonna, is anybody can help us? Yes. By the end of the year, you begin the, the questions begin to be answered. Yes. You see the players that, oh, you know, she she does some nice things. So. Yes, and, and the one that always sticks out to my head uh, in my head after every game, uh, the one that's growing uh, to me probably maybe the most is uh, Delaney Miles. Uh, she is absolutely amazing. She's averaging uh, 10 points uh, plus a game. Um, last night she had 12 of her 20 uh, with JV. Um, but uh, every game it seems like she's just doing something even either better or just just more uh, expanding on what she actually already has naturally. Um, so she she will definitely be um, one that we'll be looking at uh, in the future. With, since she's only a sophomore, we have, we'll have her for two more years, and we're really looking forward to that. Now she's one of the taller ones, I believe. Yes, I, I know exactly who you're talking about, and she she does work very hard out there. Yes, she does. And say uh, we uh, on offense, we try to get her the ball uh, quite a bit at the high post and, and let her go to work because she does have some ball handling uh, abilities. Uh, but she does have a nice closeout uh, at the rim. Uh, she will she will fight for rebounds, um, and she is one that we'll definitely be looking at because of just everything that she does with hustle, uh, shooting, rebounding, uh, closing on defense as well too. Jeremy, we are certainly glad to have you here in Sulphur Springs Thank and uh, doing a valuable job uh, with uh, Lady Cats basketball team and it's been fun so far and at 18 yes. and 4 that uh, uh, probably surpasses most people's expectations at the start of the season I would think. Yes, to say 18 and 4 is great. I say coming off of that uh, huge tournament win up there in uh, Idabel, uh, that that was very nice, uh, good for the girls coming in starting district. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have a great game last night, but uh, let's say the 18-4 record is absolutely amazing. Um, we've finished one, two, or three in all of our tournaments this year. So, um, so we we can't ask for a better start to this season and just feeding off of that going into district. And we're really really looking forward to it. What's the high point? Was it the winning the Idabel tournament? You think? Um, I honestly think the the high point for us. Uh, the Idabel tournament was definitely a, a great uh, boost and, and great feel for the girls. And uh, they said they loved going there and getting that win and getting the trophy with Sedavia uh, and Autumn being all tournament as well as Sedavia winning the MVP of the tournament. Um, that was very nice. The high point, um, I think, for us coaches uh, as well as a lot of the players um, is in the Winsboro tournament, uh, going to Winsboro uh, with their girls and beating them twice um, wow. on their court uh, with, with their fan base, packing the gym, uh, and it was a very loud environment. And putting and getting two wins on their home court was very, very huge. And that first one, just amazing because there were, the fans were filled with their students from all grades. Yes, uh, you had a. a what I call the football team or the guys <laughs> right behind your bench and every time uh, Coach Tisdale would call time out they would start yelling as loud as they could and she, yes. she couldn't hardly talk but you know what I think it focused the Lady Cats yes. and kind of made them mad a little bit they were very, very focused. They wanted to win that game in the worst way. Yes, they did. I say every time that we were in the huddle, even at halftime, at break, uh, they were they were definitely feeding off of that crowd, and that that's another reason why we always ask for the the crowd support, uh, either on the road or at home, because those girls feed off of that crowd, um, whether it is uh, against us or with us. They just feed off of a huge crowd, and definitely, like you said, they were feeding off that crowd at Winsboro, and it fired them up big yeah. time. And just like uh, we were talking about, uh, you beat them once, and I said, oh, no, not a rematch. That's the last thing we want. You know, we gave you know, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, to, to get that yes. first win. I think we've got to do that again. But, you know, I think the, the girls think this is a team we can beat. Yes. And I think they were very, very confident, and they just kind of – that that the next game was kind of matter of fact. I mean, mm -hmm. they just took control of the game and never let it go. Yes, yes, say yeah. Uh, so that rematch, we were thinking the same exact thing, but uh, one thing that we were telling the girls is that, hey, like, you know, it's time to show out again. I say, we beat them once. I don't know if they know, but hey, they think that we could probably take it to us, but you know, we beat them once, let's take it to them again. And they just showed up from start, to, from jump ball to end game. They showed out and they, they had complete control of that game. And it, it, it was very nice to watch our girls go to work on that game. 
Well, you talked me into it. I think that's my favorite moment, too, because yeah. I'd forgotten that, you know, in, in the swirl of everything that's yes. going on. But I reflect back on that. I went to that game, and, and it was an incredible game. And yes. it, it did make a mark on me. I, you know, I, I put that one down as one of my favorites. Uh, yes. And Sedavia hitting that shot uh, right before halftime where she crosses yes. midcourt and puts up that shot, and it goes in, and she oh, fist yeah. pumps, you know. And, boy, that was and a great one. <laughs> and when that shot went up, uh, me and Coach Lindsey we were sitting there, and as soon as she released it, he called it. He said, it's in. And yeah. it went in, and we just walked it into to the locker room at that point at, and at halftime, and it, it was amazing. Uh, that, that was a huge momentum booster for the first game uh, for us to come out into the second half and take control and then uh, close out the win. And then that just led us into the second game, that rematch against him, and took it to him. And we, we knew that we could do it. Uh, we, we did it one game before with all that momentum, and we just, we just kept with it. A lot of highlights still to come, and yes. we're looking forward to it as uh, we get deeper into district play and get, go over there to Lindale and get that win. You're one and one, and, mm -hmm. and the, everything looks a little brighter. So yes. that's a big, big game for the Lady Cats to pick up a win there. Yes, sir, it is. I say we, we'd love to see everybody out. I say I know the, the Wildcats have a bye, so come on out to, to Lindale and support the Lady Cats. I say they would love to see everybody there. And it's not a bad drive, maybe 50 yeah. minutes uh, yes. to get over there. And uh, not, but not bad at all. So uh, yeah. thank you again, Jeremy, for your time on uh, Saturday morning. Thank you. And uh, that's going to wrap it up today. We appreciate uh, uh, everybody joining us. I'm Don Julian, and so long, everybody.